Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar of how to connect remote teams and build company culture. So as it says right here on the slide, this webinar will be recorded and we will share it afterwards. So throughout the actual um, week, you will be able to get an email and then re uh, watch the recording. Let's get started. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, just write in the Q&A section. Um, I will be checking the chats. You can chat amongst yourself if you'd like. Just remember to change the chat to all panelists and attendees so everybody sees your chat. Um, but other than that, add any questions to the Q&A and I will get back to it at the end of the webinar or throughout if I have some time. So let's get started with what Kahoot actually is. So first off, let me introduce myself. I'll stop sharing. So my name is Evelyn and I work at our Oslo office, uh, which is our um, headquarters in Norway. And I am responsible for community and uh, our business users, which is you guys. So whenever you have a question and you reach out to us via LinkedIn, that will be me who's answering. And if you don't follow us on LinkedIn yet, make sure you do, since I will be posting all updates there. So make sure you follow us. So let's get started. What is Kahoot actually? So we are the leader in gamifying and learning in the workplace, which means that our platform makes um, e-learning presentations and training engaging, as well as builds a great company culture, which is why you are all here. So businesses use Kahoot to build culture for onboarding, for team building, for employee engagement, for company gatherings, and to engage audiences at live and virtual events. Virtual events being a very important topic right now, as uh, a lot of people are working from home. So we will also touch upon how to do video conferencing with Kahoot, as well as how to do remote challenges with Kahoot. So for onboarding, a way to use Kahoot, for, for example, is to ask your employees to do a selfie Kahoot. With this, we talk about selfie Kahoots when we are talking about a Kahoot to introduce yourself. Um, so for instance, in our company itself, we also ask all new employees to create a selfie Kahoot and everybody plays it, which means that um, throughout that, everybody gets to know the actual new hire, which is awesome. And for team building, we play Kahoot every day now, since we are all working remotely. So every day a new person hosts a Kahoot, uh, which means that everybody gets onto Zoom and just connects with each other, sees each other, which is so important right now, since nobody's actually um, working together. Uh, everybody's working remotely, so you don't might not see any colleagues that you don't have direct contact with, since they might be out of your team. So it's very great for just employee engagement as well as company gatherings. So if you've never played Kahoot, there are two different ways to play Kahoot. The first one is via a live game, which could be either in person or via video conferencing, which is something that we will do um, very soon. So with a live game, everybody plays at the same time, which means that the host, which in this case later will be me, shows their screen either in a classroom setting or shares their screen via a video conferencing tool, as I'm doing now, and they will show the question and answer options right on their screen, whereas the players will only see the answer tiles, as you see here on the mobile device, which then correspond with the specific colors and answers on the host screen. And the second way to play a Kahoot is a Kahoot challenge, which is a self-paced game, which means that this can just be played at any time from anywhere by anyone that you share the specific link with. Because people see questions and answers on their own device instead of having to look at a host screen. As you can see right here on the mobile app give, you see that people see the questions and answers and then specifically have to click on the answer that they think is correct. And then that's just how they create, well, how they finish the Kahoot. So when you're building company culture, you can do this through like I said, onboarding new employees, which means that you can use Kahoot, as I said earlier, as a selfie Kahoot to introduce new people or new teams, or you can use it um, as a way to introduce company policies, which is some way that we've seen a ton of companies use Kahoot. Instead of somebody just 
standing in front of a whole group of new hires and talk through policies with a presentation, they actually create a cahoot to really reinforce and improve retention of the specific policies. You also have an option to track throughout time uh, who has actually correct, uh, answered something correctly throughout different games. So if you want to do a company policy checkup after a couple of months, you can just play with the same people again and see if they've improved or if they've retained the knowledge that you shared initially. You can do team activities. Um, so specific teams can play specific games. You can create groups together, you can get such good feedback as if you're working remotely right now, you might not get that um, touching base with your employees, but with a Kahoot, you can either put a poll in it or you can add a word cloud and you get immediate instant feedback from your employees. And it's a super fun way to make virtual events memorable as it's super nice to just break the ice um, throughout the gathering or do a company-wide tournament. And with a tournament, we mean that you can play specific games throughout the day or throughout a specific event and then combine all the scores at the end so you have one overall winner of the event. When you're hosting Kahoot remotely, which is something that's super topical right now, you can host it live. Again, a live game is where one person is sharing their screen. So with this, they have video conferencing. Um, and then the other people, the players, they only see the answer tiles on their mobile device or on the browser that they're using. So with this, it truly connects everybody as you might be working remotely and you don't see anybody. It's great to turn on video while you're doing this as you really see everybody cheering, just fun and it brings this engagement. And it's a great cost efficient learning impact as nobody needs to travel in order to actually host an event or do a meeting. There are a ton of different video conferencing tools you can use Kahoot with. Literally any video conferencing tool that allows you to share your screen you can play Kahoot with. So right now I'm using Zoom, but if you're using MS Teams or Slack, Hangouts, doesn't really matter. You can use all of these together with Kahoot. Just a quick reminder how to actually do that. So before I um, started this webinar, I clicked, this is specifically on Zoom, but I'm sure that other tools look very similar and have the same options. You can just click the share screen button, however that one looks on your tool and make sure to share your computer sound. The reason I'm saying this is because Kahoot, if you've played Kahoot before, you know this, has really fun, engaging music. And it would be a shame if nobody can hear the music if you're sharing your screen remotely. So don't forget to actually click share computer sound. A lot of tools, um, for instance, Skype and Teams, they have this built in, so it automatically shares sound. But if there's an option for it, make sure you click it. And then challenges, as I said earlier, these are self-paced games, which means that you just create a game and create a challenge link, which you can then send to anybody who has to complete this game within a specific deadline that you choose beforehand, which is super convenient as everybody is playing at their own pace and can even take a break midway if they need to do something else and come back to it after. It's also great if you are working with um, time zones different teams, different companies in different countries, maybe, since you just put a deadline and anybody can create, uh, sorry, can play this game within that deadline. So it just goes over all time zones. And it's awesome to retain knowledge. If you're doing a presentation beforehand and you want to just do a quick checkup to see if people have retained the knowledge or you just want to reinforce what you've been talking about, send out a challenge afterwards. Great way for you to just build that culture. So we have a player identifier feature, which is part of our premium plus offering. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, it's all on our pricing page. And with this, you can actually request the email address of people who have played your game or challenge, which means that you can know exactly who has completed your game. As you might not be there with a challenge, obviously this is a self-paced game. So you might not um, actually know who has completed your game. As for people who haven't played Kahoot yet, you have to enter a nickname before joining a game. And nicknames are uh, anonymous. So with the player identifier feature, before the nickname step, you just ask for an email address so you can track people um, throughout the game. 
then let's go to the live demo. So when you get to your Kahoot account, this is where you get. You get into your homepage. And in your homepage, you have a couple of things. You've got some blogs, you've got your Kahoot right here on the right, and you got your latest reports. When it comes to um, finding a game that you can play with your team, you can go to Discover. Here in the top navigation bar, so I've just clicked on Discover right there. And then you find a ton of games that either we've created ourselves or together with partners, or you can search through millions of games that are made by users, just like yourself, that you can play in an instant. So we've added a couple of um, collections right here, which have different topics and they cover different things. So for instance, connecting remotely. So here's, you can use this to challenge your colleagues remotely, which is really fun. You can send out a famous movie quotes, um, Kahoot, if you just wanna send out something fun for Friday fun or after work. There are topics which change constantly and are always very topical. Or you can just type in the search bar here and get access to millions of Kahoots. If you want to create your own Kahoot, however, you have to click on the Create button. So if you're clicking on Create, you have two options. You can either start from scratch, which is this new Kahoot Create part, or you can choose a specific template. These templates cover a ton of different use cases for business. Um, so you can check them out and just see which one you like best or which one you need. There is sales training, events, presentations, compliance training, um, new hire training, or just the fun selfie Kahoot. Like I said, ask your new hires to create a selfie Kahoot to introduce themselves. For this, I will take you through different question types you can add to make your game extra engaging and really um, play this with your team and make it really fun. So let's start to create a new Kahoot from scratch. So I clicked on that and now I get into the creator. With this, if you click the add question button, you get all the different question types. So depending on your subscription and we go through the pricing page at the end, you have access to different question types. Quiz and true or false are our most basic ones. And then there's a, a couple of premium ones. So if you've played Kahoot before, the quiz um, quiz question is just a very typical standard one question and four answer options. But we've added a couple of new things which are really cool. So for instance, if I would make a quiz question about, let's say Norway, since I'm located in Norway. So what is the capital of Norway? Then we add four answer options, which could be Copenhagen, London, Oslo, or Berlin. So as I started typing, you see that there's a check mark here. So if I click on it, this is the answer that will be correct. And now there's a ton of different image options you can add, which is really fun and engaging. If you want to add images that are um, pre-existent, you can click on the image library right there, which gives you access to Getty images. You have millions of images. You just either search for something or you get a couple of search suggestions, which you can use. So if I click Oslo, I will see all images of Oslo and I can quickly add this. So we have added this option, which is multi-select. So um, instead of people just clicking one correct answer, there is an option now to click multiple uh, correct answers and people get points extra per correct answer that they have added. So if I would have added multiple, let's say two answers here that are correct. So for the sake of it, let's just add Oslo and Oslo. And these are both correct. And people click both of them, they get more points than they would if they just click one of them. You can also change the time limit right there or change to do no points or double points. With double points, it's um, a good tip to do this every once in a while, as it really pulls in attention again from people, since they can suddenly jump up on the leaderboard. Then we've got true or false, which looks very similar, just got true or false um, pre-populated. You can add open-ended questions, which just makes you um, be able to recall things without giving prompts, since you're not showing any answer options. You can do a puzzle, which is fun to 
um, put processes in order. So with this, instead of people having to click a correct answer, they drag the four answer options in the correct order instead. So you just ask people um, rank these stats or put these countries um, from largest to smallest in population size, for instance, and you can just add these. Then we've got a poll question, which is where you get great interaction with your team and can really ask for opinions. With this, it looks very similar to a normal quiz question, but there are no correct answers as we don't want to influence anybody. And obviously with opinions, there's no correct answer. So you can start off your Kahoot, which is something that I often do with um, just to get a feel of the room. So how are you doing today? And we've added a new option where you can add images as answers. So with this, for instance, I would do, if I click here on an image, image library, I can add a smile, happy smile. And then I will see all of the images that have something to do with happy smile, if my internet allows it. There we go. So this person looks happy, then we can add a sad one. So image library, sad face. So now instead of words, I can just add quick images, which is great. And you can even mix it up with adding uh, words as well. So I don't know, terrible. There you go, four different options and people can choose these. Then we've got a word cloud, which is where you again can give your players a voice. It's really fun if you're playing a trivia game to just ask some opinions. Um, a fun one is always, what's your favorite movie? Which make sure to give enough time limit for as people. Um, it's a difficult question, obviously, since there's so many good movies. So it's a fun trivia thing, or you can use it as a brainstorming tool with your team. If you want to ask what the next priority should be, or if people have ideas for product features, just ask a question here and people are prompted to type the answer on their device. And then we've got puzzle, uh, sorry, the slide which is the last um, question type, which is not a question type, obviously, since this is a content block. So here you just write a title. You can write information up to 250 characters and you can add an image or video, or you can choose to either add text or a video or an image or both. When you wanna add a YouTube link, just click YouTube, paste in the YouTube link, and then you can um, choose between when and when the video should play. So you don't have to show the whole thing. And then you click add. You can currently only add YouTube links. We don't support any other tools. So if you have a video on your own computer, make sure to upload it as unlisted on your YouTube account, for instance, so nobody else can see it and then add it into your Kahoot. You also have the option to very quickly um, create new codes by choosing the question bank option right here in the left toolbar. If I click on the question bank option, I get access to all of the millions of questions that have been created before by other Kahoot users. So with this, you can just start typing something. So staying into the capital theme, let's do what is the capital of Italy? If I type this, I get all of the questions that have been written with this and I can quickly add them. You see that this one has an image with it, so this will be automatically pulled in as well. So if I click Add and I close, this has been added to my Kahoot and it pulls in the question, the answer options, as well as the image. So if you wanna create a quick Kahoot on a trivia topic that you're sure that a lot of people have already created about, just click on Question Bank and search anything. Just so you're not worried about this, if you don't want your questions to end up here, as long as you keep your code private, nobody can see your questions and nobody can ever find your code. Just so you know. So let's go out of this and I will show you how um, fully made code looks with all of the different question types. So right now I am in Kahoot, which you can see here in top navigation bar, which means that this is a place that stores all of my Kahoot as well as my company cahoots. So currently I'm in my company team space, 
which means that all of the members in my team can actually um, see these cahoots as well as collaborate on them and add new cahoots. So if you want to uh, create a cahoot with a couple of people and then play with the whole company, if you want to have um, a company party, you can just collaborate on it together. You can even create folders where you can have different departments, which is great to connect with your team. So if I go to the sales training cahoot and I click on the three dot drop down and I click edit, you see all of the different question types right there. So we've got quizzes, which is, um, I always add a very easy qu question where people should know the answer just to get into how it works. Then a poll, like I said, to get the temperature of the room. You can add slides to pivot into new topics. And then we've got puzzles to put processes into order, as well as word clouds to get, um, again, just more information. So I exit out of this and I'll show you how you can play these Kahoots. So when you are under Kahoots, uh, your own Kahoots or your company Kahoots, they both look the same, you have a play button. So if I click the play button, which is green, you go to the specific Kahoot you wanna play and click play, you get the two options I talked about earlier. So you have the option to either play a live game which is under present, or to play a self-paced uh, challenge, which is the assign button. So it says underneath live session or challenge at their own pace. If I wanna create a challenge, I just click on assign. And then I have the option to set a deadline. So right here, date. Let's say I choose, um, yeah, this Friday, makes sense, end of the week. I give my colleagues a couple of days to um, finish this here and I choose a timing to 3 p.m. Then I've got a couple of options right there. I can choose to leave the question timer on. So if I turn this off, people um, will have unlimited time to answer questions. But if I leave it on, it's just the standard question time that you've chosen in which people have to answer questions. Then there's player identifier, which again is where you can ask for email addresses from people. And you can choose to do a nickname generator in which people don't have to choose their own nickname in the beginning. You see your player limit. And if I'm satisfied with all my options, let's do player identifier on so I can show you. If I'm satisfied with everything, I just click create and I get taken to the report of this specific right here you see a challenge link. So I can copy this URL, and this is the one that you would send to your team and to your employees or colleagues or anybody you want to play with. And they can add this um, just in their browser, whichever browser they're using. Or if they have the Kahoot app, they can just enter this pin right there, and then they um, start playing as well. So if I show you how this looks, I just copied it. So now I'm going back to my browser, pasting this challenge link. And then I'm asked to enter my email address as I have enabled the player identifier feature. So let me just add my email address, click go. And then here I would add my nickname, which could be anything. It doesn't have to be your own name, it can be literally anything anonymous. And I get into the game. And right here, I'll be able to see the question and answers on my own screen and answer directly. So this is just a super easy um, question to begin with. So I click the correct answer and I get immediate feedback if it was correct or not. And here, if other people have done the challenge, I will see all of their names as well as their, um, as their points. And I'll see how I compare in regards to them and on which position of the leaderboard I am. So this is how a challenge looks. Looks exactly the same on mobile, so you can play it on any browser or on the Kahoot app. I will just show you reports, which is the last thing on our left. So if you're playing a Kahoot for fun, you might not be interested in reports, but if you're doing this as a way to um, engage people and you wanna make sure that either you talk about um, something that they have to remember, so you wanna see who's retained the knowledge, or you're doing something that you, as I said earlier with policies, you wanna just touch upon a couple of times, see if people have improved. It's very important to look at reports. So if you click on reports in the top navigation bar, 
you get reports of every game that you have played, uh, both live games and challenges. So uh, with this, let me just look at a report. I don't want to show you the one that we just did as email addresses will be visible and with privacy issues, not showing that. But let me show you a different game, uh, which is just normal live game. So I click on live games and then I can choose a live game, for instance, this one. And here you will see an overview of just who has played it on your players. You see difficult questions, um, people that, when it says need help, those are people that have scored less than 33%. And um, you have the option to show the podium again, if you wanna share this with um, your employees, or you can choose to play again. So it's a good way for you to see who's won, uh, which questions might have been difficult, and just get an overview. So uh, I've got a couple of Q&A questions. Somebody's asking, um, when all participants answer, why don't the game end? Um, the game, so when you're asking a question and everybody has answered, it automatically stops. But if there's one person who hasn't answered yet, the time will roll run out and then the question will be done. So with us, I think that there might have been one person who uh, dropped off throughout the game. That's why it had to go all the way down until everybody had answered. And then um, somebody's asking, if I am the host of self-paced challenge, will that show up in results? Uh, absolutely. So if you go to results, it only shows up with the host. So under challenges, I will see um, just the whole result page of the challenge. And if the challenge is still running, so I go back to reports and let me show you the challenge I started earlier, this one. If I click on it, um, I just find the player link and I will live see who's actually entered it. So my name is here, as I showed you earlier, I played one question, but everybody who has entered it will be here under players and you have the option to just send out the challenge link again. Great, so let me go back to my presentation. So I've got a couple of tips for you and resources you can check out as well. So I've already showed you earlier, you can add images as answers, which is really fun to do a who is who. You can even do, um, if you're looking for fun um, topics to do with your team, you can add a who is this baby. You add, choose um, the baby picture of me, for instance, Evelyn. Then you add a couple of baby pictures from your colleagues and it's a fun way to do that. Switch up your host. So as I said earlier, in our company, we're playing daily cahoots to just get, stay connected with everybody. Ask different people to host every time as it's not fun if just the same person plays, uh, starts the game because they can never play it. So just every day a new person can play their cahoot that they've created. And then do Celtic cahoots. It's just a way to introduce yourself. It's really fun. It's something that doesn't take a lot of time to create, but it can really um, add some fun and people can get to know you. So you can find more information about um, Kahoot and using Kahoot for company culture or just in your trainings or anything that you want on our website, which is kahoot.com. If you go to slash business, you get into all of the work information. And we've got a lot of success stories and customer stories that are just doing case studies that we've done with companies where you can see how they have used Kahoot before um, so you can get some inspiration or you can watch short guide videos that we have on our YouTube channel, which are um, mainly hosted by me, as you can see here, which explain you in a couple of minutes um, a lot of different features. And then we've got a LinkedIn page, which you can follow where you can share your Kahoot experience with us and um, find any updates about any new features that are upcoming and there's a ton of them, let me tell you, that are upcoming. And you can go to our FAQ if you have any questions, as well as send us an email at business.gohit.com. So when it comes to pricing, some people might be wondering what they get with which specific subscription. So we've got four different subscriptions for business. We've got Standard, Pro, Premium, and Premium Plus. And as you see here, the player limits are different on all of them. Um, so it depends on how many people you are planning to play with, as well as which question types you want to use. So with standard, you only get um, 
just normal quiz, enter or false question types. With pro, you get a ton more, which are here, polls, puzzle slides. And if you want the full Monty, you want everything, just go premium. Or if you want to be able to identify people in your game with the email address, go premium plus. So it's depending on your specific use case and what you need. I will check if there's a last Q&A I can answer. Um, Somebody's asking the length of the options is very short. So with the, I'm thinking that this is about question timer. So you can change the question timer in your Kahoot. So if I go back to Kahoot, and let me just click on create and show you quickly where you can change that. So I am creating from scratch. Here you have the timer limits where you can um, just choose whichever time. So how many seconds people have to answer. And then the last question, what the YouTube page is again, our YouTube page is just Kahoot. So if you go to YouTube and um, search for Kahoot, then you can um, just find all of the YouTube videos. We've got a ton of them. There are tutorials. There are ones that are hosted by me, a lot of different ones. Great. Thank you so much for attending this webinar. I hope you got all of your answers, uh, questions answered. If you have any others, just send an email to business at Thank you so much.